DHCP relay agent. In a routed network, you can deploy a DHCP server on each network segment, so clients on each segment can be issued with an IP address. However, there may be circumstances that prevent you from placing a physical DHCP server on that segment. In this situation, you'll need to allow DHCP broadcasts to cross a router to the next network segment. The problem is, unless you have a Boot P enabled router, routers don't forward broadcasts, so we need another solution to get our DHCP traffic on the remote segment to cross the router and reach our DHCP server on the local segment. This is where the DHCP relay agent comes into play. A DHCP relay agent will listen for DHCP broadcasts on the remote segment and forward those broadcasts to our DHCP server on the local segment. To configure a DHCP relay agent, we need to do this in the Routing and Remote Access MMC. So we'll click on Start, Administrative Tools, Routing and Remote Access. Now as this is a new server, Routing and Remote Access is disabled by default, so we'll have to enable it by right-clicking on our server and selecting Configure and Enable Routing and Remote Access. Now this starts up the Routing and Remote Access Server Setup Wizard, so we'll click Next. Now there are quite a few options here as you can see, and these are really out of scope for our discussion on DHCP, so we'll stick to what we are doing here, and then we'll choose Custom Configuration, and we'll choose Next. Finally we need to select LAN Routing, and we'll choose Next. And we can see a basic summary that we're actually installing the LAN Routing, so we'll click Finish. And now we get a message telling us that Routing Remote Access Service has been installed. Do we want to start the service? Yes we do, otherwise uh, our DHCP Relay Agent isn't really going to help us, so we'll choose Yes. OK, so our Routing Remote Access Service has now been started. OK, down the left hand side of our MMC, we'll need to right click on General, which you see underneath IP Routing, and we'll select New Routing Protocol. And then we'll select DHCP Relay Agent, and we'll choose OK. Then we'll see the DHCP relay agent is now popped here underneath our IP routing. So now we'll right click on our DHCP relay agent and we'll select new interface. Now we currently have three interfaces on this computer, although one of them is actually the internal loopback address so we can't really use that. So what we have here is we have our DHCP server which is currently sitting on our 192 network and we have a 10 dot network as well. So our DHCP interface, our relay agent interface needs to sit on our remote segment, which in our case is the 10 network. So we'll select that interface and we'll select OK. So now we're presented with the DHCP relay properties of the network connection that we chose and we have the relay DHCP packets option already checked. We also have the ability to change the hop count threshold and the boot threshold if we wish, but we'll just accept those defaults and we'll click OK. Now we'll right click again on our DHCP relay agent and we'll select properties. Now we need to enter in the IP address of the DHCP server on the 192 network. So we'll enter 192.168.0.11 and we'll click Add. And then we'll click OK. And now our DHCP relay agent is already defined. So now on our remote 10 dot network if a DHCP client boots up and broadcasts for a DHCP server to supply it with an IP address, the DHCP relay agent will get that request and forward it across the router to our DHCP server. So at this point, I recommend you fire up a DHCP client and ensure that it is in fact being supplied with the dynamic IP address from the DHCP server.